hello everyone welcome to Tina Boda shop this is a weekly live and we are going to do Valentine's still we're gonna do it all month long um today what we going to explore is vertical ombre to pigment and this design the layer are relatively easy and simple but it's very difficult to perfect so today we're going to explore that also this is a whatsapp group just in case you haven't joined yet you can join this group to get updates every time that i go on live stream i will text the group also uh, every time we have annual sales i will text a coupon in the group request okay. let me turn this off and accept request thank you for your acceptance Man, it's a cute angle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna do the wood pigments. Um, something that I noticed why I'm doing this is your surface have to be smooth, so you have to make sure that all your tool are dust free. Because if there is like debris on it, it will leave like tiny little bumps on top of the surface of the polish which is fine when you paint in and then pop coat on, all that bum will be irrelevant. But in this design, I'm gonna dust pigment through the polish. So if there is a tiny little bum, you will see it like, like this one right here, can you see it? That is a tiny little bum, but it will be darker than the rest. So in this design, let's see this bum right here. See little bum here, little bum here, just because I actually ha uh, didn't dust my tool before I start. So that is a little troubleshooting here that we are going to explore today. Maria said, websites and chargers. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Let me uh, put on my website. Everything I use is at www.tinovo.shop. In the comment here. All right, so I'm using pigment base and brown colors. Oh, bam. Okay, I'm adding Tyra's moderators. Okay, so this is why I use. But the color, you notice, it's not like a white color. It's like a nude pink color. So what I do is I take my pigment base and then I make with just a little bit of brown color. Let's take the brown color out. Make sure I does it's part though. Okay. Do you have a video for the alien princess moves? Uh I'm not sure which one. DM me and I'll see. I have two many design with too many name i have no idea what alien princess now is when i see the picture i will remember right away but not two names okay that would uh, just a little bit of brown color remember only a little bit don't go too crazy and we shall mix it together
now you can see it become like a uh, like a light nude colors okay if you want you can add a little more only go a little bit at a time let me see how it is now Okay, so I like it like this. So I'm gonna stop right here. Like a light, light nude. And then I'm gonna beat it a little bit just for any bubble to go away. So I don't want any bubble. So I'm just gonna beat it. Like when you stir the eggs, like scramble eggs, you know that this bubble, so I'm just gonna do this. Smash all the bubble away. I don't want any. Yeah, I don't want any bubbles. I'm gonna spread it out just to make sure there's no bubble left. Okay. Then I'm gonna take one now and apply that on it. So let's use. Let's use the bottle of the polish. I like this brush. Mm. I love this polish brush for sometimes when I do full cover, I want a brush like this. I would press. Okay, now I pan over it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle all the way through. Make sure all the buckle is going away. No dust. Everything is nice and smooth. Then you look over the surface. There is a tiny bit up above. Don't you see it? Just one. I hate it when every time there's just one. I have to make it go away. Okay. So it go away. <laughs> no bum at all. There is this piece of dust right there. So normally this will be kind of irrelevant, but uh, what we do in this pigment, so we want it to be perfect. Do you wiggle to get the, rid of the bubbles? Uh, so. Just for me to uh, distribute it easier. That's all. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clear this. Okay, just for, uh, I wiggle uh, often, just whenever I want. Just whenever I don't have like much paint on a brush, and I just want to squeeze it out really easy, I do that. Because sometimes stroke is a, like the straight up and down stroke is very light. And sometimes it's difficult to squeeze a gel out of a brush like that. Stroking is what I do whenever I want to like smooth out a surface. I do stroking, but I wiggle to, to squeeze a gel out because I want it to be out quicker. Mm -hmm. I'm done with this brush. I'm going to wash it and return it to this bottle, to its original in a bottle it's like what what is why doing here <laughs> okay so now just wait for it to cook put this on the side okay so i am gonna chew a puffer for this one i'm gonna use this 
And I am definitely will you white pigment too because it's very essential to make this perfect. And, and I'll get a paper towel. And I will get my pigment brush. Want to make sure that I use something to scrape up all the excess dirt. Okay, I'm ready. Take this, apply it out, smudge it on the paper towel. So this be like your new palette. Okay, smudge it on the paper towel. So now your brush have a lot of dust. You don't want that. You don't want to apply it on your nail. You have to tap it out. Now, no brush, no dust at all. Cut when you, when you dust over a nail like this, like when you dust it, you don't want dirt to shoot out at all. So you want it to be dust free. Make sure you knock it all the way off. Now, now pick up just lightly, just much new color into your, your brush right here. Knock off just a little bit. It's not gonna be dusty since it's already out in the palette. All the dust is all be gone. It's only dusty, really dusty when I'm dipping it in here. That's why I take it out so it's nice and less messy. Okay, I'm gonna color this one pretty solid. Okay. So now, take your brush, sort of smudging it on here so it's weaker, you know, because you don't want a lot of powder here. Very lightly. I'm going to blend over this very lightly. I keep going out here. Our limit is the middle, so don't go past the middle. But right here, that's when we should start to focus on the fade. Okay, they have to fade it all the way out. That is when we need white, and it's it's difficult to make it perfect. But because I don't have enough practice on this, I only do this one or twice with uh, um the vertical pigment. I'm very good at pigments, but this one you have to be like extra flawless because it's clean. It's not complicated. And anything that is simple and clean is so difficult. Okay. So now I want to dust it more off. I don't want a lot of color on my brush. But it's more structured than gel. Sometimes I use gel. I find myself really stroking a lot. Just waiting to become perfect. Here, I already know all the steps. Like right now, I'm trying to focus on the fade. See, I have one bum right here that I didn't notice. That's why it get dark now. See it? Um, I do it by segment like this too. Just whatever you're comfortable with. I'm still very new to this concept. Okay, so right now, I want to switch to white pigment. So I'm going to stop right here. Okay, right now, it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent, but it could be more perfect. So right now, I'm going to stop. And this purple pigment right here, I'm going to use this. So what this is, is, is when you apply top coat over this, it will disappear. 
So this is why pigment is a filler. It's gonna thin this out. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna thin out this purple right here. So it would be like a light pastel purple, but when you put top coat on, it will be like a sheer purple. It'll be nice and even. I use it to help me on ombre a lot because it just helped me apply color easier. It just helps space the purple out. So it's not, the purple is not thick and rich. So it's easy to blend. Thank you. Okay, so about like this, it's like light purple. I'm gonna apply over here. Sometimes when it seems glitchy, <clears throat> it's only at this time and then it gets better. Yeah. This is going to be a relatively short live because I have to pose uh, at 5 o'clock and then I'll go back to do another live. Okay, see all purple now. Now you can fade it out exactly like what you did with the uh, heavy purple, but this color is going to be easier on you. Happened. Oh, I accidentally. Can I get out of that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's so cute. I definitely need a lot of practice on this. Hello, Venezuela. But right now, it's still not that structure on me. I'm still jumping here and here and here. I, I'm not having a sense of structure yet. So it definitely take a lot of practice for me to jump from point A to point B confidently. But right now, I'm kind of like doing this right here. And I'm going to do this right here. So it's a little bit chaotic right now. I would love to get to a point where I can just go in orders without jumping around, that is when you're really confident about it. Right now, I'm not quite confident about it yet, so I'm. you can see me jumping around. Like, confident is like this. This is confident, see this? Was it like this, this, this? You kind of like, sort of blind-ish. I hope you notice that, just in case you discover yourself doing that when you're designing, you should know that that means it needs more practice if you ever do that when you're designing. Jumping around. A concrete step will help you if you want to make a video or something like that. You need to memorize all your steps. Because if you jump around, it's very, it'll be very hard to do a video like that. So get it to where you have no stop. Like you're not. No hesitation. Right, right. Like right now. It's, to me, it's like, okay, it, this could be perfect, but there is a small chance that it could not be perfect. You know what I mean? When you get to a point where you're like, oh, it's going to be perfect. Then that is when the practice is over. Mm -hmm. I done it only one last year, so I'm still very amateur at this technique. Okay, right now. Now I am going to dust it and I am going to apply a layer of sanded because when I apply this pigment right here, I don't want it to stuck on the back. So I have to block it. And I was using Teflon mat to do uh to block pigment, but I just decided to return to sanded for pigment because sanded really easy to apply on pigment versus the matte top. A matte top is a little bit dangerous for applying on top of pigment like this. So since sand it worked for me in the beginning, then I just returned to sand it to work best for me. 
that for Mac is um, blocking Chrome. So I'm really happy with that. I would, it can block pigment too. It's just that it's a little dangerous when you work with pigment. If you don't know how to apply it or if you're not focused. Okay, so it turned out pretty nice. Um, I will give myself a B plus on this. So a B, a B because it's not perfect. And a plus, a plus because, well, I tried to make it perfect. So I deserve a plus. So it's plus a B for plus. effort. Right. Okay, now. I am going to take the same gel and draw the heart on. And then blend it the opposite way. Now, the heart are easy. The heart are easy because... It's not the entire nail. What's difficult here is that we have to blend the entire nail from top to bottom equally, you know. But the heart is in a little shape. And for me, shape are easy to blend. I just do a little bit of this and it's perfect. So and this is what I'm talking about. Pigment, when you get to a level where you can make pigment design perfect. And when I say design, I mean like this little heart right here. That's a design. When design, you can make a design perfect. The next step is to make the vertical ombre, which is so difficult because not only you have to put pigment on it like this, you have to make it straight and even. So it's a little difficult to meet the difficulty level on pigment uh, vertical ombre versus gel vertical ombre is the same neck and neck. Neck and neck. Yeah. The other one, it don't, it's not concrete like pigment, which means solid and then blend. It's not like that. When you work with gel, you just have a light stock and you just keep stocking it in the hope that it will be perfect. And your stock can be whirly a little bit and you have to go over and again and again. So for me, gel vertical ombre is like a waiting game for inexperienced people. But pigment, you can learn. You can learn pigment. So to me, I'm back and forth between the two. Okay, so my sanded is already on. So I should have no problem right there on pigment. Pigment not gonna stick on it anymore. It's not nothing gonna stick to it. So everything's nice and clean. Okay. Now I'm gonna use the same gel. I need a ten millimeters. I'm gonna draw the heart with it. Let's clean this. And you got it. You got a chance, Glitzy Nail Assassin. She said, if you find it difficult, I got a chance. You just have to know oh, no. that Tino is a super, super perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to know that you do want to do what's difficult. Because what you already know how to do, there's no reason for you to practice on that. You already know how to do that. You know what I mean? You yeah. just need to do something that you can do. That's just the whole purpose of learning. Like, I never learned something that I already know. Something that I already know, I'm just sitting around and trying to improve it. But things that I haven't yet capable of, and other people can capable of it. So far, I haven't seen any people that attempt to do the uh, vertical ombre using pigments. They usually use airbrush or gel. So, but that gotta be at least another person somewhere in the world, right? Like in Russia or India or somewhere. That gotta be a, a person, I'm assuming. And if there are that person that can do it perfectly, I have to do it perfectly too. Oh. And if there's no one that can do it perfectly, well. Well, you're in a B plus. Well, I'm the only oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to tackle what you can't. You don't need to tackle what you already could. What you already could, you just do on your client. You don't need to practice on that. But what you can't, before you do it in your client, you have to practice. Because most people, they have to do now for client daily. So whatever time that they can find to practice, I suggest to practice on things that are difficult for you. Because mm -hmm. you cannot afford a lot of time just to go over what you already know. Back then, when I do now for client, I have about three or four hours after work that I can dissect things that I'm dreaming of, things that I haven't yet do. I dissect that. But like marbles or anything like that, I don't really go over it. I just 
do it on my client to make money. When you are getting yield to something, then you can finally make money on it. Don't... Did you wipe it? Do I wipe it? No, no. Uh, it's a, the shandy is a no wipe, so you don't have to wipe it. Anything that require wiping are not friendly with pigment. Pigment will stick on it. You want something that are no wipe, so pigment doesn't stick on it. So for more snow white pop coat work great with pigment. I use sanded. Uh, I can use chrome base. It do the same things. Pigment block are easy. Now chrome block. That's that's what's difficult. Before we have to buff the whole nail to block some chrome. Uh, you know what? I I need to stir this a little bit because I see some bubble right there. I need to stir it up. Or can add it to remove this bubble. Be gone, be gone. Okay. One right here. Be gone. Okay. So now you just have to wait. You just have to wait for it to like smooth it out and everything, doing these little things. And then you can cure it. Okay, you can cure it now. Okay, now, pigment right now are easy to do. Easier than when I first started. This vertical ombre, that is a challenge within itself. I mean, it's easy to accomplish. It's just hard to make it like flawless yet. Okay. <clears throat> Forever 21, that's it. I am forever 21. There will be at some point when I become forever 31. It'll be a well, long time though. We'll be in walkers. Yeah, I've been walker. I feel like I'm 31, big kiss. Yeah, it, it'll be a long time. But right I'm still can pull the 21 out very easy. So you need to pull 18 off. Yeah, I'm 18 off. Somebody told me I, I look 18 before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's pigment this hard. Ooh, I move in with such confidence too. I would like slapping at it. <laughs> okay, so I have this much. Okay, I want to kind of go around it to cut like a shadow on it. That would make it cool. So I'm gonna dust this edge right here to create like a shadow effect. Oh yes, beautiful. And then underneath too, kind of like curve the blend. Okay. okay, I mean, it's already like freaking perfect. At this point, I don't know why. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go in with this white pigment mix. Yes, I'm gonna go in, but I mean, you don't need to. It's already like so beautiful already. But I'm gonna go in with this just because. So, any Tonga, all his products are 60 second cure time. 60 second cure time. And, and some you can cure for 35 seconds, some you can cure for. For uh, do you apply matte top coat before pigment? No, I do not apply matte. If you apply matte, pigment will stick on this. But I apply shine. I apply shine it, so pigment cannot stick to to my background. You see, it's clean. Um, but <clears throat> what am I talking about? Cure time. Cure time. Uh, some can cure for thirty five seconds, and some can cure for like forty five seconds, but. 60 second make me feel safe 60 second because a lot of our product are dealing with special effects so i want to make sure it's cured like all the way done 60 second is my golden rule to any machine i suggest 60 second doesn't matter if the bottle told you oh you can cure for 35 i'm still gonna cure for 60. it's just because it's a reasonable amount of time when you're done working with this hand 
60 seconds already gone. It's not that long. So just go with 60 seconds. So this is a design. And I jump around. I do like two here, one here. I probably do some like pixie gel or something. On it, dress it up a little bit. But that's relatively the concept is you put a layer of pigment base or gel color. They are both able to adhere pigment flawlessly. They are dry and they are incredible for pigment. You apply that, then you put on super pigment. You can use my Indian pigment or you can use Chinese pigment. It's just up to you. I love my Indian pigment. So I'm applying it on and then you have to block it. So this is what I use to block in. I put on a coat of sanded and then I repeat the process with whatever design you choose. You can do a heart, you can do like some squirrely lines, you can do like a feather, you can do anything. But I suggest do it in the middle because these are half purple, half purple oppositely. If you jump in off the center, it might be look a little funny. So whatever design you do, try to center it like this. So you have half this, half that. That is a part of the illusion. And then after you're done, you mat it and you're done. You put mat on. And my bottle, especially when it's almost run out, I always want to pull it out just because when it's almost run out, I cannot get a lot of um, pop coat on my brush and it scare me when I pan over pigment like that. I need like a lot of pop coat. So pulling it out is the easiest, is the safest because it's dip in it. Do you cure the pigment base? Do I cure the pigment base? Yes, yes. You have to cure, you have to cure your gel. If not, you're not gonna be able to dust pigment on. You have to cure it. Okay, so I'm gonna apply on. Okay, what you need to know is, is light stock, okay? You need light stock so you don't scratch a pigment. You can scratch it, it's like chalk on the board. You can take your fingernail and scratch it and the chalk be gone. Then with the brush, so you don't wanna scratch the pigment so you want light. And I take a lot of top coat because I can glide through it, you know? And when you apply it, I apply it fast because I mean, I apply it slow because if you go fast, it become like this. See how I soak really fast and you see all this empty space it's left in this. I have to go back and it's not gone yet. That's one right here, one right here. I have to go back. This is what you get if you go fast. You, you have to go over and over and over again. And that's going to ruin your pigment. So you have to go slow. You go slow because your child have time to relax into the surface. And by the time you get to the bottom of it, you don't have to go back. That's why you go slow. Okay. So I'm going to start. Okay. I'm going to drop some top coat in the cuticle and I'm going to drag it down lightly and slowly. Glide it over the surface. There. Drop another one up here and fly over the surface lightly there. So now you have a, uh, what you call this illusion effect, illusion block. That Illusion? Illusion blocks. But done by pigment, not by gel. Kill this. Now, the time that I will use gels is if this is pretty easy. If I do like a tips or like a big block where it's simple, then what I do is I use gel. And then the second coat, I'm going to do gel. And then I'm going to take like a brush and I'm going to clean it. I'm going to clean it up so it reveals the shape. That is when I use gel, is when the design is simple. But if I, I would do like something crazy, like like lace or, or like squirrely design or something crazy that I cannot wipe it off with gels, that is when you do pigment because you don't wipe anything off. You just design and then you just brush it on. So that's the difference between pigment vertical illusion versus gel vertical illusion.
Okay. So, um, just to tie it up a little bit, I have decided that I need to take silver pixie gel. And I need to mix it with purple pigments. So, you know that silver pixie gel doesn't need top coat. This one doesn't need top coat at all. So, I'm going to take this. You know what? I'm going to chew one of the divots because when I put pigment on, it shoots everywhere. So, I like the little divot. So, it's it not shooting out like crazy. Okay, so I'm going to have some silver pixie. And this doesn't need top coat, high gloss. So whatever I'm mixing in, like if you mix in with gel polish, that would defeat the purpose. Because if you take like a gel polish like this, you mix it in, now it's no longer uh, high gloss because gel polish have a inhibition layer for pigments. So now it's stickyish. So you don't want that. You want to mix with, with pigment because pigment are draw. So it don't have anything in it. It don't have any base in it. So you can feel free to mix it with pigment and it become, it will remain the same. The gel will remain the same. Pretty bubbles. Pretty bubbles. Mix it in, mix it in. you want a little more glitter, you can. You have too much pigment. Okay. But more silver glitters. More silver glitter mean it's going to be lighter. And more pigment mean that it's going to be more to its true colors. So I add more silver in, so it's lighter, you can see, because the silver in it. So more pigment is richer in color, but in return, it takes away up the glitter a little bit. Okay, you don't see it much. So if you want to thin it down, if you get to this where you really like the color, but you want to thin it down, but you don't want to add silver in, you can add a little top coat in. You can add a little shine it in. Or you can add a little 3D jelly in, whatever you like. To get it to spread farther? Yeah, to, to, to get it more volume because to a certain point, it be dryish because the amount of powder is more than the amount of gel. So it be dryish. And if you don't want that, you don't, you don't need to throw in the silver again. You can just throw in something clear like this. Like 3D jelly. You can throw in a little bit of 3D jelly. So now you don't have to compromise Compromise. By the colors, you can you can add a little bit of this just to add volume to it. So the amount of liquid now will be more than the amount of powder. Does that make sense? It does. So that is just a few options for you. Just in case you're into mixology, then you got to know when to add this, when to add that. And if you compromise by something, you can use like a clear agent. So that's just the whole point of it. And when not to use polish, because more people were like, oh, can I mix polish? And you got to be aware what polish will do to your um, ingredient. One is a matte, one is a shine. Okay, so I take both lid out, and now I forgot which one shine, which one matte. So what I do is I take my glove, and I paint it. The residue on my glove and I cured it to see if it matte it will turn matte immediately oh I find my, my one just so you know if you ever bump in mixer bump into this problem like a lot so just so you know so now this is my shine so you know don't just guess <laughs> <laughs> I done that one before and my shine looks so weird <laughs> okay so I have my purple I want to use that on here Okay. 
I gotta put alcohol on the list. Okay. I would 3D jelly on here, but you know, if you want to do sanded, you can too, because sanded is super high class. So yeah, when it comes to your clear age and also think, uh, think about it, what to put in it. Yes. Maybe I should give it another one. But take it. What did you say? Give it not the one, but take it. I just want to see if it can ruin the illusion a little bit. I just want to see. Because I, 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 it's matte. It's matte and it's just the layer are simple. It's just in the technicality. So it's a little plain for me. So that's why I kind of like playing around just to see like, uh, is this a good thing to do or not? Uh, so far. I still like, I still love it. So, let me finish this top and we'll see. I still love it. I still love it. I haven't hated it yet. I'll consider it. Sometimes I can tell that a, a look is not work just because sometimes when I do it, it kind of annoy me. And whenever it's annoying me, I know that it doesn't work for me. <laughs> It haven't annoyed me yet. It's still like, oh, I'm so pretty. It's still, it's still very pretty. Um, I'm not gonna kid it for now. All right, should I do the tip too? I wonder. You know what? If I do the tip, it will be like brilliance. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, if I go, might as well go all the way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the tip in. Cause you know. Be before when it had nothing, I was a little scary, but it's like it's still a virgin. But now it's not a virgin anymore. I already like put glitter on it. So I'm just gonna glitter the, the hell out of it. I'm just gonna like go crazy with glitters. Before I was kinda scared. I'd be like, Oh, we don't have any glitters. I should watch out for it. <laughs> I should approach it carefully. But I don't need to approach it carefully anymore. It's already like Yeah, I like it. I'm just gonna leave it here just to let the look marinate a little bit. Just in case we wanna wanna turn back time, we can. Okay, so I need to do these two just like that. I'm gonna do this finger only because in the video I only demonstrate two here and I wanna like continue. So I'm gonna demonstrate these fingers. And I saved this one for my video. I need to add that detail into my videos. That's pretty. How is responding the uh, purple glitters? You had a question. Okay. Hit it with a sparkle white too? Question mark. Sparkle white? Yeah. No, I, I wasn't didn't. sure what she was asking. Did I touch it? I did. Okay. So you got a wonderful and a, and a I love it. Okay, good. Just, just want to make sure because sometimes I go crazy without the awareness that it's it's just crazy. Sometimes I go crazy 
but not clever, just crazy. So I want to make sure that it's still okay, you know. Sometimes I don't see certain things. Sometimes I doesn't see because I was so into something I was kind of distracted. So the brush you're using is a 10 millimeter? Yes, it's 10 millimeters. So now I move into the metal finger, which is review on camera. Uh, now my second thing is to make this gap bigger. This gap right here bigger. And I like that. <laughs> so from now on, whenever they put, this lady puts glitter on stuff, she's going to call it not a virgin. Yeah, it, it's not a virgin anymore. It have glitter now, so now you can go crazy with it. You doesn't afraid for well being anymore. So when you mix the pigment with pixie gel, does it work the same as flash gels? Like, is it super reflective when the light hits it? Oh, super pigment. Uh, I mean, super pigment have nothing to do with the gels. My pixie gel is naturally reflective, so it's not gonna go away at all. Yeah, the pigment doesn't make it reflective. The uh, gel does. The pixie gel is known for its reflective, and it doesn't really need like a lot of light to make it reflective. Neither. Okay. I am gonna go on top of here. Is it five yet? It's past five. It's past five. After this lie, I will make a pose and then I go back. I'll go back to the lie. That's why I picked this set because I already done four fingers. So I can focus on just explaining one nail. I wonder if that should be a, I wonder if that's a good thing. What's that? And I already done four finger and I explaining one nail. I feel like it's more totally of an explanation, don't you think? And I kind of feel like for the new people, of course we are changing the format a little bit, it is a lot more efficient. Just a little bit right here. Okay. Thank you, Tara. Oh, now I see this. I don't want to put a tail on it. I just want to put a tail on the the thumb. That's all. Now we know that this, I like this better. So, whatever. I'm just gonna let the thumb enjoy the little tails right here. Hear this? Uh, okay. Okay, now. So, next set. It's read, Kwasha. I'm debating between these two. I kind of like this. Oh, they have clay dough. I'm <coughs> trying to avoid the clay dough because I, I already sent Cindy the, uh, the product she should be putting on soon. Hopefully, she say, uh, Maybe it will take until Thursday. So she gave me a day. It's Thursday. We're just waiting until, okay. because we'll get so many questions all the way through it. The so. thing is, I have clay dough. 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 <laughs> you were having fun. I only have this. There's no clay dough. <laughs> you were having a lot of fun. Oh, oh my God. You got to have so much fun in clay dough. So it's not as hard like Chinese gel. It's not it's not like hard like to a point where you couldn't mold it. It's actually kind of soft, but it's different than silicone. It's like it's the percentage of cell level is extremely low. It's only like five percent. It's only cell level on the surface. But if you make an indention, it gonna stay there for a long time, for like a couple of hours. It's just gonna stay there. So that is something why I do with detail like this. When I work with like all this screw right here. I like the clay though because it's low cell level. It's, it's, it's still smooth out for you just on the surface, 
but you have detail easier. But for things that are sticking out like the horn or the tail like this, I use silicone because it's break proof, like you cannot break it. So your client can actually wear this if you if you will and take the time to do it. But like the horn, like everything is break proof, like nothing is stiff. But this clay dough is dry stiff like a rock. So it's it's opposite of silicone. So I have been having quite a lot of fun with it. That's why I go crazy with clay dough. Mm. <laughs> but this design doesn't have uh, clay dough. This design have embossed. I need to fix it because this is a little low. This is a little high. I need to fix that. So, okay. I am going to be off live. And I'm going to go on in about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to go on doing the next design. Well, while you prepare, I may call the anxious moderator if she has two or three minutes. Okay. So that I won't know unless she tells me. Is she still on here? Is Tara yeah, she's still on? Not right at the moment. She, you know, hasn't shown me any attention at all. It's okay. She got quick finger. She's very quick fingered. Okay. I'm going to call you for a second or two just because I want to hear your voice. <clears throat> As you can see here, this is the evidence. Evidence? The evidence that I went to a battle doing this now. A battle, a mental battle. I was like on the verge of insanity. <gasps> But as today, my second time doing this, all clean. That is the evidence that my struggle is now a little lower than the beginning, where it's, where it's crazy like this. Now it's less struggles. By my third time of doing this, I will be ready to rock and roll. But I will not be doing it the third time because I'm already done with the vertical ombre. I'm ready to move on to something else and struggle again next year. Oh. Okay. All right, I will turn up live. Thank you everyone for joining me and I will be on live again. Uh, I have been trouble getting my pedal all the same consistency. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it keep dipping in the art gel, but some come out thinner than other. Is it my pressure? I have been trouble getting my pedals all the same consistency. Uh, no, it's not your pressure. If your pedal stroke is different, it could be, number one, you have to make sure you mix it well before you use. But some of my color, I made the consistency different. Like my emerald, I made it semi, like 5% of it is shaded for the emerald. So you can thin it out to do like marble because it's pure. If I were to mix it in another 5%, it will not be pure. So... No, it's not your fault. Some of my uh, colors, I make it uh, in a different consistency than, than others. Lucky design, so talented. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So now I am going to go up live. When is a live day? There's no date. There's no plan. Whenever I'm done with a certain content and I'm ready to go on live to finish the content I'll be on. Um, now it's more inconsistent than ever because now I have more things to do now. So it's become more inconsistent. That's why I make a WhatsApp group. So in this WhatsApp group, um, whenever I go on live, I go onto this WhatsApp group and I tell everybody, hey, I'm going to be on live right now. So it's sort of like me text shooting you a text message because in the WhatsApp group, nobody can talk except for me and Tara. So you're not going to get alert all the time. But whenever I'm texting the WhatsApp group, you get notification. So it's just like me texting you. And that is how you know when I'm doing live. All right, everyone. I will see you later in about 15 minutes. Bye-bye.